Oh, you said you didn't have it for very long. But you, but you did have one. It was a mule or a donkey. That was a mule. That was when I was. Uh, well, let's see. I would have probably been about fourteen years old. Probably about that. Where'd you get it from? It was bought. Probably at a, a sale where they just went through selling parts okay. or something, and sure. they did an extra. Of course, all the work was done then on the farm with horses, and uh, bought this. Uh, probably bought it because it was cheap. I don't know. I don't remember that <laughs> thing about the price, but anyway, it was a good work on animal, but it uh, it took him. Uh, you tell time when it come. Uh, <laughs> Noon, about 11.30, by, it was ready to go to the barn and you could turn it around and get hit and it just stop right there. And you could get after it and get it going, take one or two steps and just stop. And all you had to do was take and pull the line and pull it to go towards the house and away you go. <laughs> <laughs> So he's he looking for a lunch break. Turned that way, he didn't know it. He goes to the house. Evidently, he used to 11:30. He get quit working on the and construction work. You know, that time would be pretty regular. You know, about one lunchtime. You know, and they stop <coughs> for lunch, and then they go. You know, he went to work for Ed Maxwell. He had all, he had uh, mostly mules. And uh, there's one little team there. <coughs> he turned them out and died in the woods and go out, go down and get them in the morning, you know. To get them to bring them up for to work with. He'd have, have your open. Well, he had a halter on already, but that rope, um, past when you carry that rope, you couldn't, you couldn't touch him, you know, you could walk up to him, but you couldn't, just keep out of your way, just keep out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you could drop your rope on the ground, you could go rock right up to him, you know, but if you had that rope in your hand, <laughs> now why why would it, why? <laughs> he didn't want to go to the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he didn't want to go to work. <laughs> uh huh. Interesting. But he takes you around, run, run. but when he go, it wouldn't be no problem. You know, but <laughs> he was really aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> Stubborn as a mule was accurate then. He did. He didn't just run away from him, but he'd just stay out of your reach. Just stay out of your reach for him, but he couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, Tell us about when you used to hand pick corn. What was that like? Corn? Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Usually took and uh, had the wagon, one side of the wagon you had to build up what they called a bang board high, you know, so that you could just throw your ears up against the, the wall and then fall in the wagon then, you know. Uh -huh. Otherwise it's kind of hard to hit the wagon every time, you know. Sure. And uh, you get down there, a, a team of horses, a, a good team of horses work good, it just as long as your ears was hitting that bang board. They just keep working along, along. If you get up close to them, they just move farther ahead. And huh. at the same time, they were kind of eating on the fodder and stuff. But where you'd already, they'd be in the corners already. The ears start taking off of them. They'd bite the fodder and leaves and stuff, you know, and know, and eat along and just. <laughs> you were saying that you could. You could tell by listening if somebody knew what they were doing? Oh, in the early morning, 
<coughs> the air is kind of still in the early morning, and you could hear somebody out there hitting corn. You could hear those ears hit that bang board, you know, at the sure. <laughs> throw, you know. The, you know that, and it was kind of a nice sound, you know, to hear those. <laughs> So I guess if they knew what they were doing, they could do they could hit that bang board pretty quick. So it would it'd be a pretty good rhythm going, I guess. Yeah. Off the bang board. Yeah, you'd be around, you know, just one ear after another, you know. Uh -huh. And they could. Uh, <laughs> now would they go ahead and shuck them and everything before throwing them on, or would they still? Do I, would they still have the shuck on them? You take you take and you had a hook on your well, you probably had gloves on, but you had a. Uh, the thing that kind of strapped on this one arm, it had a little hook on the, on the, about the thumb there, and you you go in and take a hold of that ear, by taking the, oh you take a hold of the ear with this hand, and, and around, and it, your hand just down below the top a little bit so your your thumb could go over the top of it, and you take and pull that hut one side, off to one side, you know, and then you could take your hand right over and pinch it between just the thumb and finger, and then you get this ear in your hand, and you kind of come down, and you come up with this at the same time, it kind of bind on the, and snapped it right off from the stock and reach the next ear. You know. Sure. Huh. It's a... A talent. Well, yeah. How much could you pick in a day? A uh, good corn picker could pick a hundred bushels. Well, but you had to work at a hundred bushel. Very few people could pick a hundred bushel yeah. a day. <coughs> now, did you tend to go it on? It depends a lot on the on the corn crop. You know, the size of the ears and the, sure and the, so it takes about two bushel baskets of ear corn to make one bushel shell corn. Huh. So you take like, a lot. How old were you when you were doing that kind of work? Oh, I don't know. When I was doing my own, I probably was 15, 16, probably 14. Yeah. How old were you when you first started kind of helping out on a farm? And I, I know that when I was working in the steel mills, it, it, very few people that would uh, could husk a hundred bushel of corn a day. But, uh, could you? I think he's told me one yeah, time I he did. was about, weren't you, about nine years old when you started helping with the farming? Yeah. Would you start, what did you start doing when you're that little at nine? Oh, I said farm with farm with horses then. And uh, like you have team horses pulling up. Harrow, and then you walk behind the harrow. The harrow broke and the clumps up. Because most of them cultivating corn, of course, cultivating corn, you, you sat in a, and they had two horses, and they straddled a row of corn, and uh, you just cultivated one row at a time, and then uh, there was a set of about five or six shovel, little shovels on, the, on each side, and they was all fastened onto a gang, and then you had they were movable, that whole gang, and you had to hold it with your hands up the top and you could move it in or out, you know, and you could, okay. if you'd seen it, the corn then was pretty all planted in checks so you could cultivate it both ways. Okay. And so the, the, the stalks would be probably about that far apart. <clears throat> and you could see a chunk of grass in here, you could swing in and your shell and get it, you know, just move it over. And, <laughs> and, uh, hmm. Were you walking then or were you riding? You're riding. Yes. What were you doing the day you walked barefooted? Yeah, what? What were you doing the day you walked barefoot all day? Oh, that was a, uh, yeah, the corn was big then, too big to could call it. So it had a little narrow uh, <clears throat> thing, you know, they would just fit down between the corn rows, you know, where you could move back and forth a little bit. 
it had handles on there and a fire shovel, but you walked behind it, you know. And uh, one horse pulled it and went down between the corn rows. And uh, this there's a flat black level ground, you know, no stones or nothing in the ground. So uh, my shoes would get dirt in them, I probably was about wore out or so. So this day I was working for <laughs> Mary Maxwell. So I thought, well, uh, this black dirt fine it feels good on your feet anyway. <laughs> so I just took my shoes off and walked barefoot. Walked <laughs> all day down back and forth through the road. I went in eat supper and we eat supper and then went out and milked the cows after that. <laughs> I got up the table I couldn't hardly walk and my ankle and all your foot was was all swelled up. Oh, man. And, Never done it for not being used to walk a bear. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Hard to get to the cow barn. <laughs> you, a lot of things like that. Didn't you say you were about nine years old when you started helping? You what? Weren't you about nine years old when you started helping on the farm? Yeah, I was pretty young, you know. Did your whole family pretty much just help on the farm? Kind of keep things going? Well, yeah, I'm not, I don't know, not so much. Lloyd, Lloyd was I, I would say probably when I just started doing field work because we had lived on the Kirk place. I might have done a little bit there when I lived on the Patton place, seemed like, I remember. Of uh, working there some because uh, I remember uh, Les Finney working right across the fence. Uh, I still picture him, so evidently I was working in the field. What, what was that attracted you to Les Finney's field? Yeah, what? What did you tell me about Les Finney's field? Oh, planting corn. His corn rows wouldn't, wouldn't be straight at all. <laughs> Most people plant try to get their corn row drilled straight, but <laughs> his, you couldn't look down there from one end of the field <laughs> to the other to his corn rows because <laughs> they wasn't straight enough they'd overlap. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Did that make it harder to, uh, he remembers yet. <laughs> did it make it harder to, uh, like, cult there to, to harvest it, I would guess, too, or not really? Not really. Make, I don't know if it made any difference if it was a harvesting. It was just, Mostly just looks, I think, is the only difference. In fact, maybe he advantaged a little because you get more corn in a crooked row than you would in a straight row. <laughs> Gets a longer line, right? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe he had an advantage there. Maybe it was a <laughs> That's funny. I don't, I don't know why. I, was, I still I remember him so particularly. It was just a few things you remember that. You don't ever forget, but when you think about it all the time that's spent, there must be an awful lot of things that happened that you don't remember. Yeah, yeah. There are a few things you do remember. <laughs> but why, you, at the time, I must have made some kind of impression just to, to see his... That's true. <laughs> ...rose down. We'd be working right across the, you know, fence from him. He'd just be a one. It was just a fence between us, you know, uh -huh. come out to the same end. Uh, the thing I remember about the farm was people well, there's a lot of things the thrashing machine. About, it seemed like Les Finney, I don't know why, uh, it must have made an impression more than, uh, than some other people. Because, was there something about his personality that made you notice the things that he'd done <laughs> More than somebody else. <laughs> well, it was your neighbor too. His handy yeah, to look yeah. That's true. People neighbor, but some of the other neighbors, I don't remember town, much about them, but maybe they just wasn't the in a position to, to notice them. You know. But uh, when you think about of all the things that you don't remember back then, how. Well, you remember a few things particularly yeah. that you, 
and not some of the others, you know, that must have happened, you know, during that time. Well, did you, I was going to have Grandma, because I was trying to remember the way that song went. I was going to have Grandma, I was going to have you maybe sing that song uh, about the, the dog, or the puppy and the uh, wheel. The but then I was also, did, Grandpa, did you have, well, I was going to give Grandpa, did you have any songs as a kid that you remember? Just sing any what? Songs as a kid that you would sing that you remember, or like that your mom would sing to you, or anything like that? I don't know. Yeah, some of the work's all done this fall with kids. You're all, what? Kids all associate when the work's all done this fall, I think. Yeah. When the work's all done this fall. What? Is that a song you knew, Grandma? When the work's all done this fall. Oh, that song? Uh, I don't know if I can recall it anymore. Do you know it? No. No? Uh, it is a song. It used to be on recording someone. It was a popular song. I'll see my mother. A group of cow cowboy jollies singing, something about a campfire, and uh, one said to the other, I'll see my mother when the work's all done this fall. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think he gets sick, doesn't he? What? He gets sick and dies, doesn't he? Oh, in the song? Oh, uh, he's on a horse somewhere or another. Uh, it was a group of cowboys, and uh, and he hurt, and he and he sang this song as he was dying. I, I'll see my mother when the work's on in this fall. How did that go? I thought it'd have you. Who was it, do you think? Kenny, yeah. He taped me to the song someone brought it to him one time, and I I just need to go through our old yeah, tapes. Just you know, it was again, I that tape. Well, do you want to sing the, 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 the puppy song about the... Well, I was going to kind of see if I could write it down first to help me remember. Oh, sure. Well, and Grandpa, I've been, I, you, you may have known I was doing this, but when you, when uh, you said the prayer, for, you said you did it for Jim Henry a while back. When I had you say pray a prayer for Jim Henry, and then when you did it last night, I've been trying to have the the tape recorder on, because uh, I mean it's good for me to hear it and for Honey to hear it, but I figure it would sure be good for them to hear it uh, themselves, just that people uh, think and care about them and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't know if. Uh, uh, if I could talk you into praying for the Yarnell kids, even, and I could maybe make a copy of it for them. Uh, I don't know. I think each kid needs probably some encouragement. Yeah, uh, Dad. Put that in your pocket for me, Dad. Just uh, since there's there's nothing more important than uh, being faithful. Well, he's hearing it or not. But would you Did be? Did you hear what Jimmy said? Uh -huh. Would you be willing to say a prayer for the Yarnell kids that I could record? The Yarnell kids are for Dallas and, for yeah, Dallas and for Lauren. Dallas and Lauren. Uh, say a what now? Sure. Would you be willing to say a prayer for oh. them? Just to. Uh, and like you said, a yeah. Prayer just for the I've just ones. I've I've appreciated you praying for Jim Henry and Charlie, and uh, I figure I can make a copy of it for them and give it to them, and then they could, uh, you know. Wouldn't hurt for them to have something like that. <laughs> Some encouragement from from Great Grandpa Foster, and uh, uh, hopefully you can uh, uh, say a lot more prayers for them. But just I thought it would be good to have a uh, have a prayer that they could uh, just have. But would you be willing to say a prayer for them? Okay, now let's see. Their their names is uh, uh, Dallas and Lauren. Dallas and Lauren and Jimmy. No, well just. You already okay. said one for Jim. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be different. So just that's Dal well, Dallas and Lauren, I guess any future foster kids. How about that? Oh. <laughs> Get them all covered in there. Okay. Uh, if you do it, that'd be nice. Our Father, as we come together here 
in this uh, hills of Tennessee, enjoying the place of nature, reflect back onto their grandchildren, uh, their upbringing and where they originated from and some of their, their parents' background. And as they've come into this world and facing many obstacles that will be before them, many temptations that will entice them to be led away from what do you would have them to do. And we pray that you will help them that they might be overcome these uh, temptations and trials and be able to continue to focus on you. And we pray that as they go through life that they can be well guided by you as they feel you close by and they feel that you can reach out and touch them and, and protect them from all the things that might influence them that wouldn't be pleasing to you. We pray that you will give them the strength to endure the, the troubles and trials of life. And we pray that you will continue to give them a real degree of help and help them to overcome these things that might interfere with their life. And we pray that they'll ever look to you for help and guidance and for the decisions that they make. And we pray that you'll protect them health-wise, that they might have a strong and healthy, fulfilling life as they go through. And we pray that they will live as Christians and do your will as you see, as you guide them through life. We ask you to continue to watch over us and help us as parents and, uh, and role models that we might be able to live lives that will influence them. As we do realize that many of the th things that we learn in how to serve you and to treat others and to live a good life is by example. And, and we pray that you will always be near when we need you. Forgive us when we fail you. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Grandpa. I appreciate that. I, just, uh, I look forward to showing the ones for Jim Henry and Charlie to them. <laughs> when they know enough to know enough. Yeah, that's in Lord too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's what, yeah, I'll make a copy of this for them. Mom was talking about uh, thrashing when the thrashing machines come and stuff. And I know Mom probably had to work quite a bit to get ready for thrashing. As well as yeah, it was, was a kid as a child. I remember the women all running in the oh, house to get, to yeah, out, to get their th clothes off the line because the thrashing machine was going through town. I never saw it in action on the farm. I remember the day after Mary was born, we had brought her home and I was cooking for men to come thresh. At that time they weren't changing with neighbors, they had to hire people to come in. And I had been up that morning and done a load of laundry, and fed everybody breakfast, and was hanging, hung out the clothes took care of the babies <laughs> and cooked the meal. I thought at the time I should write down everything I'm doing today. And I didn't do it. <laughs> well, that's, that was right after Mary was that, born? Yeah. Back in the days when, early days, what they would do would be neighbors would all come with their husbands. And the women would all cook the meal, you know. It wasn't just all one woman doing everything. Hmm. But by the time yeah, I got they, into it, <laughs> five, eight, eight, 20 most people men were combining. Mr. St. Clair demanded that Dad combine, and no, that Dad use a threshing machine. He owned one, I think. And we would uh, have to pay the men who came to work that day, and we had to feed them all. And 
and I had it all by myself. I didn't have any helper. Well, and you had that and the kids to watch to boot. Yeah. It's a lot of difference. Well, Grandma, when you grew up, did you grow up in the town or in the uh, I grew country? Up in Fairview there, which was just like Wheatfield, a little town. And uh, there was any farm close. There was a woman down the street who had a cow where we would go and get a gallon of milk. And my mother worked, so Madeline started babysitting us kids when she was, when Chuck would have been four, I would have been eight. And it was younger than that. I know Chuck was younger than that. What kind of work did your dad do? He was a coal miner. And he, uh, the coal mines around Clinton all closed up. There were some, oh, what do they call them? Strip, not strip mines. Anyway, they would go in the side of the hill and bring out coal. They didn't have machinery or anything to help them with it. And they were doing it non-union. And I remember one night in the night, somebody who was a, union, a bunch of union miners went through the town through, they call them those cocktails nowadays, something that would explode when they'd throw it up, a bottle of stuff that would explode when they'd throw it up on their stuff. Sure. Because they were angry that they were working in those Evidently what had happened was the bigger coal mines had struck and never had gotten along with the, the uh, owners to open up the mines again. So these people who were going in and doing non-union work, they called them scabs, and they figured they were hurting them because with them going there to work, well, had kept the owners from having to hire the men who were on strike. But many of the miners eventually ended up not even working. Hmm. Dad went 50 miles each way to Illinois to work in a coal mine, and that coal mine was very dangerous. The moving belts would catch people and injure them. I've heard him come home and talk about somebody having an arm pulled off. Wow. He took a neighbor who had eight children and really needed work. He took him up there to apply for a job. And when he saw the ambulances parked around outside the mine, he didn't even go in and apply. Huh. So Dad was doing really dangerous work to keep his family going, you know. Hmm. He worked at that for several years. Sometimes he boarded away from home. For a while he worked, before he got that job, he worked on the highway, really built 41. Took part in building for Highway 41. He worked all the way up to Boswell, I know, because he boarded there one summer and a neighbor took us up to see him one weekend. And when you boarded, I guess that would just be what it was just too far to go back and forth for work. Right. So you'd find you'd rent a room from somebody. Right. Yeah. Were there? It sounded like I mean it sounds like there were homes that would let you do it. Uh, you know, there were people in in Boswell. He boarded with a family in Boswell. They were very friendly because when our neighbor took us up there, they fixed a meal for us and entertained us that weekend. Oh, that's we nice. Existing dad. That's pretty cool. And he had some other men at one time. Uh, stayed up over in Illinois one winter. They got a cabin somewhere. Well, you know, one time each mine had a little mining housing for mining workers right by the mine. I've forgotten what they called them, but they were it was a coal mining town furnished by the owners. It's like, a, like a like little company rent, town. Right? Yeah. They called. They charged them rent to live in those, and that part of their salary went for the 
living there, you know. <laughs> so there, you hear of it in Kentucky, but it happened all over originally. Hmm. Well, and, then, and then your mom was able to stay with you guys? Or did yeah, she have to work she, any? No, she worked at a... At a uh, an overall factory, and during the uh, during this time, she would hire neighborhood girls for like five dollars a week to come in, and they would do the laundry and babysit if there was one of us children small enough to be at home or sick or something, and uh -huh. start supper for five dollars a week. Wow! Wish you could get that now. <laughs> My mother. <laughs> Uh, always told us girls she wanted us to get college education because she didn't want us to have to work like she did. Uh -huh. She got paid so much a bundle for doing the seams, side seams and leg seams on overalls and she would have a dozen of those old pairs of overalls in a package that she would pick up and take and do and then she'd turn it back in. If there were any mistakes made she had to do that over. Uh -huh. She got paid so much a bundle and when I started teaching I got like $25 a week cause for nine months. The other three months I didn't get any pay and my she was earning $35 a week at her job with overalls but of course she had to work a lot harder for that $35 sure. than we did sure but she was kind of shocked to think that we weren't making more money than that huh as teacher she was making more money than we were <laughs> I have a better picture if she sat here probably the, uh, why don't you go sit over here in this rocking chair I don't know if I got too much more to I was going to have you sing that song. No, I was not done. I may have to sing it over because I may not do it. Well, that's all right. I think the video is going to be good.